It's a special prime time edition of the NFL on EA Sports. Fielded in the end zone. They had no run back here, so they'll bring it out to the 25. So out come the Texans for their opening drive. And trotting out there, their tall quarterback standing at 6'5". And what I'm looking for from him today, the things every quarterback is looking to do, lead his team to a victory. Doesn't matter whether he's throwing it, running it, handing it off, however he has to do it, as well as exhibiting some leadership, that's what he's trying to accomplish. And they'll begin by running the option. And the Seahawk defense gets to him, and they bring him down. A bad start there. A big loss on their first play from scrimmage. It's second down. Back at the 19-yard line. Now here's a throw right side taken in by his tight end. This will be a short gain of three before he's brought down at the 22. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Brings up third. Well, they were unable to make anything really big out of that, but it's not a bad idea to find your tight end and give him an easy completion and keep moving things forward. Almost as bread and butter as a good running back dive play. Complete to On third down, you'll give them that. You just want to make sure that you play the first down line. They were able to get him down and force the punt. And the punt team on now as this one set away. Fielded at the 20. And then he goes with a juke. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. A great return there. Bobbin and weaving his way for 31 yards. And the Seahawks will have great field position to start this drive. They take over on the short side of the field. And they'll come out with a three tight end look on the first play of the drive. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. And that's one of those plays where it's hard to keep two eyes on the football when you know the contact's coming, let alone getting two hands around it, hugging it to your body, and absorbing the hit, even for those big tight ends who you would think can absorb that contact. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. Now, meanwhile, they go for it on fourth down, and my goodness, incomplete. Boy, it looked like he had it and dropped it. And this Texans defense stands tall. And he'll have a tough time living that one down. It's one thing, Charles, to drop a pass. It's quite another to drop it on fourth down. And so many teams work on that in terms of locking in on those key downs. You know, I've seen, you know, you and I have both been to practices where we've seen, hey, third down situation, big third down alert, Lock in here, fourth down play. Make sure you focus just a little bit extra. It didn't pay off in that situation. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. The kicker here is complete. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too game. bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. And he will find his man on the end route, complete. 
And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. It's a big play yet amazingly because of how far they had to go. They're still looking at a second down here. Counting down toward the midway point in corner one. His throw caught right around the six. And he'll take this one in for a Texans touchdown. A 24-yard touchdown. And the Texans have taken the early lead. And correct me if I'm wrong, that was just a simple fly route, wasn't it? No, there's nothing to correct at all. You've got it down pat. And I just remember as a player, when I'd be in practice sessions, Looking and I'd hear nine from the receivers, that meant fly route, go, uh-oh, look out. <laughs> that was nine, and he just kept going all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. The extra point splits the uprights, and it's now a 7-0 game. Seahawks. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Taking it about the one. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. At their own 32-yard line. Seattle's offense coming back onto the field, ready for their second drive. And last time out, went for it on fourth down, turned it over, gave them great field position, turned it to six points, so they've got to recover here, Charles. It's amazing what one decision can do in the chain of events, right? The decision to go for it on fourth down. It caused all of that. It caused every bit of it, but it showed confidence. Hey, I've got confidence in you guys. Go pick it up for them. Didn't happen. Also showed confidence in the defense. They didn't pick up their end of the bargain. So now they've got to come back out and start over and rebuild that confidence. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and put the defense back on its heels. On first down, he'll drop to throw. And nowhere to fit that football in. It's knocked away and incomplete. And he's missed now in his first four passing attempts. The rhythm is just not there to begin this ball game. So second down, still 10 yards to go. Ball on the 43. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You foresee incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 39. And he's able to get it back here to the 43-yard line. The Texans well, look, we're watching a quarterback here that's obviously been around for a long time. That's a throw he wishes he had back. He certainly does, but as you well know, this is a guy that's used to taking a few chances, used to fitting it into tight windows. These are throws that he's made before. Didn't happen to get it completed in this case. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Brings up second and five on the Seahawks' 38-yard line. Meanwhile, the throw here is complete. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. Five yards on the pickup, and they'll be faced with a third and inches. And they'll try and run the option to pick it up. Boy, no chance as he was met and dropped behind the line there. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness, he's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. On is the punt team now as this one sent away. Out of bounds as he appeared to be looking for the corner. He got it. They're going to mark this at the four-yard line. That's a double win there, partner. You keep out of the return man's hands, and you pin him inside the five-yard line. Pretty darn good. First and ten, and kind of tipping their hand at running the ball. Three tight ends are out there. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he's going to take this up past the ten to about the eleven. 
Now after the play, it looks like there's a Texan here slow to get up. Definitely the last thing you want to see here in a preseason game. We'll be right back. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. And he'll give it here to his running back. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. You've not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped it. Mucked that down for a win in the defense's column. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down, and comfortably so as he gets five there on third and a yard. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. Looking left side, it's complete. He's got him. And he'll get this one way up just shy of the 45-yard line. The extra effort after the catch makes it good for a gain of 26 and also a first down. Nice job there of utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink it. Understands the catch radius. Understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defenders away from the ball. And puts it right out there for the nice pickup. And again, this time to the tailback. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. He was brought down. That's a really good game right there. They pick up five yards halfway to a first down. The only problem now in the huddle, everyone's going to want to touch the football. There'll be a lot of chattering now because they've seen that they can move the line of scrimmage. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. That'll wind up going for a loss of four. And that's going to bring up the third down. Some of these play calls, I think they're a little conservative. But you know me, because it's easy to sit up in this booth, right, and make all the calls and they think I'm going to be correct. But I would like to see them open things up, because otherwise this defense... And he can't find anywhere to go with it, and he goes down. He was trying to keep his eyes downfield. Nobody came open. He was trying to do everything that he had been taught, right? Every bit of the technique. But if no one's open, there is no technique, except make sure you hold on to the ball as you go to the ground when you're getting sacked. They'll get nine yards on the return there following a punt of 42. And the Texans will take over with a first and 10. Ten yards on the pickup, and it'll be second and very short. Ten yards on the pickup. It's second and inches. Now a handoff here to his running back. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. Now after the play, it looks like there's a Texan here slow to get up. Definitely the last thing you want to see here in a preseason game. We'll be right back. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. Well, oh, this is going to depend on the spot, but it, it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. Another scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. That'll be a 44-yard boot, just a yard on the return as he's covered up quickly. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. Now here's the signal caller getting ready to lead this offense again. He's got to dig deep here, doesn't he? Team's losing. He's not playing well either. And they always tell you, don't press. You'll make things a little bit worse. But in this particular situation, you try and heighten your play a little bit. So far, he's thrown one interception. He wants to balance that off with at least one touchdown pass in order to get his team back moving forward. And he'll give it here to his running back. He takes this for three to the 29. Number 34. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that field. I'm like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. Here's a second and seven. 
They'll tussle for it, and this is going to be caught. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. Give him 32 on the play. For an offense that has not found the end zone yet, that's a big play. There's the spark right there. The big play that they needed. Now they've got to go ahead and finish this drive and put this ball in the end zone. Oh, a battle for it here, and this will be caught. And they move this all the way down to the nine. Back-to-back -back plays of right around 30 yards, and the field position has totally been flipped. Coming up at halftime, I'll go from one personality, that's you, Charles Davis, to another one in Orlando, the coach. He'll have stats and scores from around the NFL. You and Jonathan Coachman, both larger than life. No doubt about it. You're stuck with me in this booth, <laughs> yes, and he's I miles am. away and smiling. And happy. The short field shrinks even more with the type of bodies they brought in on that play. Those extra tight ends, they weren't able to secure their blocks, and that one ended up going backwards. So first down went in the wrong direction. They're at the 13-yard line. Here's second and goal. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. That time the completion goes for four yards, and we're set up with a third and goal. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone, or? Better against man, because now you're running away from someone, and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. And he's got it. Caught in the end zone for the Seahawk touchdown. A great effort there. There to make the grab. And the Seahawks just an extra point away from tying this thing up. Well, he wasn't the guy they were initially going for, but after going through the progressions, it worked. When you have plenty of people who can catch the football, you don't always have to go to your primary target, and sometimes that target is actually covered. Nice job coming off of that and getting it to someone who was open. Yeah, the man out of the backfield gets in for the score. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. Takes this about five yards deep. And this will come out to the 25 as Jones elects for the touchback. And now out comes Houston. Tie ball game, still a little more than a minute to go in the half. The question, can they put something together here, try to take that lead into intermission? I would have to think that would be the goal for sure. I don't think you sit on anything here. Here's your opportunity. Push it downfield. As you mentioned, it's a tie game. So minus a disaster on your part, you've got that in your back pocket. Go ahead and try and get some points and feel great going into the half. Now a toss left side into the hands of his tight end. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. They wound up getting nothing out of that second down completion, so now here's third and ten. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. And a throw there going to be incomplete. As we thought they might do here in week two of the preseason, they've left their starting quarterback out there for this second quarter. But I would imagine we will not see him after halftime. Yeah, this is the time of year you've got to get your backup some reps and make sure you protect your starting quarterback. A very nice punt that time, but they get 11 back on the return. And that will come the offense as they take over. The Seahawks take back over. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown, and now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back. The special teams went out there and handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. Good starting field position here for the Seahawks as they come up first and 10 at the 41-yard line. Flushed out right. And that is incomplete. You know, during these preseason games, we're in week two right now. It's always funny looking at our spot charts up here in the booth because with all the guys that might play in this one, it seems to get bigger and bigger each year. Yeah, we pretty much supersize them, don't we? Because, you know, remember, they're carrying 90 now. And with the new rules, they'll carry 90 all the way through the preseason before they make the final cut. Oh, yeah, a lot of guys to learn for these games. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. 
Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. And he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. Ten more there and another first down. It's a game of but one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. They'll look to throw here on first down. And he's going to be taken down. Pressure gets there back at the 39-yard line. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. Steps away to his left. Oh, hit as he throws there, incomplete. Well, he certainly did a nice job improvising there, extending the play, hoping someone would come open downfield, but they never did. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 41. Fourth down now after a loss of two. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. Now a timeout. Seven seconds left in the first half. So now they're going to send out the field goal unit to, as they say, fire away from long distance. So this will be spotted on the midfield logo. It's a 58-yard attempt. going to get the snap off. This might back him out of field goal range. So that'll back him up five. And how about this? Fourth and long, and they're going to go for it. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. He's going to fire one deep over the middle into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 11, and he will be brought down as time has now run out on this first half of action. So a touchdown apiece. That's what we have to show at halftime as they head to the locker room. 7-7, seven, seven, our score. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sport. You sure you're ready for the third quarter? Need to use a bathroom or anything? All right, cool. Let's go. Expect to see a good number of backups going forward as we are back and underway here in preseason week two. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. 22-yard line. Seattle again getting ready to take over offensively. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and 10. Two yards on the pick up there. It'll be second and eight. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. And that one goes incomplete. He's maybe lucky it wasn't a fumble as he got hit as he threw it. So, Charles, tie game here. What are your keys as we continue to play this second half? I know people think it's always trite when you say the same things over and over, but they're tried and true in the game of football. Who's going to block better? Who's going to tackle better? In this case, to me, it's turnovers. You've got to take care of the football in order to win the game. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. We always talk about and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read. Read the pressure, 
and got rid of the football before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go with a football? Without a doubt, because he's right in your sight line or he's near you. So you're able to just get it to him easily. And once he... There he goes, right side. And all the way in, touchdown Seattle. A big play there. 67 yards. And the Seahawks have taken the lead. And sometimes those slants, they can be so tough to defend after the catch. It, it just happens so quickly. And really, what gets set up there is how quickly everything happens. Ball's out of the hands of the passer in a hurry, and he just takes it and goes. And he went all the way into the end zone. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. Just a four-play drive that time. And it all culminates with a Seattle score. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Taken about seven yards deep. And this will not be returned. It'll come out to the 25. 25 yard line. So here's the Texans offense now. They get set to start this third quarter. And this game was all square at halftime, but now they find themselves down seven following the opening drive touchdown here in the third quarter. And they need to take a good, relaxing, deep breath, don't you think? Because right now they might start to feel like they've got to play catch up here and start matching them point for point but it's still too early to get there. They can still run their offense. Plenty of time to get back in this game. A running play there, gonna get 11 as they get a quick first down. First down. First down. I absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed, and he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers, and they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. At the 40 10 yards there, good enough for a Texan first down. And they'll let the quarterback keep it here on first and 10. Under pressure here, and down he goes. Sack back at about the 43-yard line. Play three of the drive, not as successful. They go backwards after those two first down gains. Second and 14 as they've got work to do here after the sack. Meanwhile, this one knocked down in the backfield. It's incomplete. But the passing windows are just not there, and that's just another example of how great this defense has been all game long. And that's exactly what a top 10 defense can do. They can really change the game tempo and frustrate you as you try to execute offensively. And he comes back with one complete. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. And I believe that that gain on third and long changes things quite a bit because this would be a very long field goal. I wouldn't be surprised to see him go for it here. They'll look to throw. That's caught by Hollister. The 20. And he's in. Touchdown, Houston. Cody Hollister, 44 yards. And the Texans are an extra point away from tying this football game. Big fourth down conversion for the score and the defense. That is a tough pill to swallow. Big time for them. How about them just deciding to go for it on fourth down? And, oh, okay, forget the field goal. Because that looked like an easy three points. Yeah, you might have had a defensive breakdown in there, but they pressed the issue and found a way to get it into the end zone. Give them big credit for that. The Seahawks take over first and 10 at their own 23-yard line. Well, Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And their lead has evaporated in this third quarter. It's tied once more as they begin with a first and 10. And to give this time to the tailback. Drop play. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Look, all any running back wants is a little bit of room, a little bit of space in order to maneuver. But he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front. So if they give him any space, he realizes his job to make more out of it than what they give him. He picks up three on that carry. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. 
And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. And the Texans have an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. Yeah, that one's going to be knocked away and incomplete. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage, and just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. The Seahawks send out their punter as he'll punt it away for the second time. 44 on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. It's a 45-yard punt, just a one-yard return. And possession will switch hands first and 10. Houston set to take over. And that last drive, so effective in the passing game, resulting in the touchdown. Maybe not many people were focused on the trenches. There was good protection there. Excellent protection. So now defensively, You've almost got to get down to those starters blocks like you're a sprinter. Get lower than those guys on offense and find a way to roar through them or around them to get into the face of the pass. Easier said than done, though. Way easier said than done. But they've got to try something because right now they're just cutting them to shreds. Second and five. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off at the 28. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. Right there, those linebackers, they love when those short throws come and those eyes get real wide, don't they? How about the anticipation on the play? Reading, reacting, and then the ability to catch the football and take it in the opposite direction. It's up and good, and that'll make the score 21-14. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. Taken about seven yards deep. And no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. At their own 25-yard line. The Texans getting set here to take over again on offense. here to his running back and they see right through that defensively as he'll be hit and taken down to the backfield I know they'd love to take some heat off of that young quarterback but so far not much in the running game and this won't help things either a loss on that play second and 14 looking left side he's got it complete and up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down Give him 14 on that one, and a first down. On play action, they'll throw. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. The quarterback taken down and sacked. And plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really nice gain on the previous play, but gave about half the yardage back on the sack. Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the football. Down he goes. They're not able to hook up there. Incomplete. The pass intended for number 86. Yeah, this will probably be the last play of the quarter. It's now third and 19. Out of the gun now on third down. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he'll be brought down on what's going to turn out to be the final play of this third quarter. Back now in Houston. It's Texans football, but they trail here as we get started in the fourth quarter. The Texans send the punter out as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Pulled in at the 24. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. 
And on the ground they go with the running back. And he'll be taken down right around the 34 after a pickup of only a yard. I'm sure that that's going to be the formula. Just keep the ball on the ground. Keep that clock moving. And when you have the lead this late in the game, above all, stay in bounds. Yes, take care of the football. Yes, gain yardage. But stay in bounds and let that clock tick. They'll roll him out right. Now he'll let it go deep. And that's caught inside the 35. And he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. An excellent gain, 35 yards. One of the things that led this organization to commit to him as a starting quarterback as a rookie, his ability to keep his eyes downfield and make plays out of the pocket. Able to see the receiver while on the move and complete a really accurate throw. Challenged the play, it did not pay off. And that means he lost a timeout in that challenge. And as a coach, you hate that. Don't know if you took the advice of the player, you threw it yourself, but it didn't go your way. At the end of the day, it all comes back to the head coach. He has the final determination on whether to actually challenge the play or not. In this case, it didn't pay off for him. And that's got to be so heartbreaking. You throw that flag, you probably feel really confident. And then all of a sudden, boom, you lose the challenge. Yeah, when you take a look at it, you're throwing that flag because you believe you're going to be right. And when it comes back the other way, you have to regroup. Intense. Certainly appeared to take away his first read, and by the time he tried to look elsewhere and find an open target, the coverage was too good. That one falls incomplete. The Seahawks on third down. They've converted three times in eight chances. This is third and 11. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. End zone caught. Touchdown, Seattle. They have to love seeing that from their young quarterback here in the fourth quarter, able to further that lead with a touchdown pass. He didn't go turtle, did he? And you know what I mean by that. I had an old coach used to say all the time, hey, we have a lead late. Don't just tuck in and try and ride it out. Go out and play and extend the lead. And that's what he did. And he's got it up and through. So that drive spanned five plays. And the Seahawks capping it off with a touchdown. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This taken in about four yards deep. And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. Now comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now. <laughs> from all the work he's getting. And lucky to get away with one there. That one nearly picked. Second, Second down. 25-yard line. The throw on the quick slant going to be complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That'll wind up a gain of 27 on the catch and run. Good yardage on the completion there. When they look at the scoreboard, they do understand a field goal is not going to do them any good. My guess, they're going to press the ball downfield as far as possible, try and throw it into the end zone and get a score because they know they've got to get that done and get the ball back as quickly as possible. Here's a throw over the middle. It's taken in by his tight end. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. That's over 40 yards of movement with those last two plays. Defensively here, you've got the cushion, but back-to-back -back pretty big pass plays there. Bend but don't break, but are they bending too much? I think that they are. To me, it'd be like playing basketball, and you put up a token press. Make sure you get up there and make them eat up some time. Make it a little bit of resistance so they can't just run it right down your throat. Seven yards to pick up there. You got the big lead defensively willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Looking for the end zone. 
And that is out of the back of the end zone incomplete. The scoreboard tells the story for him a little bit bleak. And while it's not quite desperation time yet, it's definitely getting close. But the defense reads the scoreboard as well. They're going to back up and make him really earn it. On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. And it falls incomplete after almost being intercepted. A pick there would have been great. The good news for the defense now, it's fourth down. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And he'll take this one in for a Texans touchdown. 23 yards for the touchdown. And the Texans draw a bit closer. Well, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but his top two options were not available on that throw, so he went the safe route, worked out pretty well. It was like you were in the pocket. How about you going through the progressions like that? What a lot of offenses say, touchdown to check down. Look downfield first, bring it back to the line of scrimmage. Not easy for a rookie to do. Oftentimes they get one look and they make their decision off of that. He went through three. That was impressive. This game back within a touchdown now as the kickoff's away. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. They're on 23-yard line. Here come the Seahawks now, set to take over on offense. And now, after the touchdown a moment ago, they work from behind in a seven-point game in this fourth quarter. Plenty of time on the clock. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. Now we're going to get a timeout here as it looks like there's a Seahawk injured on the play. Definitely the last thing you want to see here in a preseason game. We'll be right back. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll rumble for about five, up close to the 40. The ball carrier. Now the objective there, I mean, yes, the positive gain, that's nice, but work some clock. Yeah, you're exactly right, but the problem for them is still within a possession. So they can't just sit on it running the ball. They'll have to find a way to throw it effectively as well. Another carry for the running back. And this is an absolutely big third down that's been set up here, partner. And there's no other way to put it. The defense has to get a stop here if they have any hopes of winning this game. Has to. You said big third down. I'd put the word big in capital letters here. As big of a play as we've had in this one so far. This is third and three. He's got his man on the crossing route. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Well, they only needed a small gain on third down. They end up getting over 30 yards. And the Seahawks first down. And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. So it's Seahawk football as we march toward a conclusion. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. And to give this time to the tailback. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. Whistles now to timeout. So defensively, they burn it here with 151 left. It's first and goal and a late touchdown at this stage. Could officially salt this one away. And they take a knee. Moved back to the 10. They'll try on second and goal here. 
The Seahawks in victory formation as they go ahead and take the knee. And now can they reverse the trend on third and goal with the last two plays having gone backwards. Down to a knee one more time, and that should just about do it. Well, partner, it's just preseason, but it always feels good to be in victory formation, taking the knee for the W. Yeah, I've often thought to myself when I watch these preseason games, some teams need the wins more than others. You know, if you're established and you're used to winning, not quite the same, but if you're trying to learn how to win, it's important to get it done and to be able to kneel down at the end even better. kick is good so you wonder how this one might be remembered the next time these two teams meet but until then this game's over well a little drama there at the end but really this thing was already decided the late points get scored and then it ends on the kickoff and i'm right there with you partner at the end of the game they knew what they had to do just make sure you don't cough up the football at the end just take care of it and victory was theirs and that's exactly what they did so that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. From Houston, good night, everybody.